So a question I have is, this is a topic that's pretty serious, and there's a lot of emotions and difficulties and challenges around it, but yet you manage somehow to interject some lightness in it and turn it into something that's more positive. So were there any funny things that uh, you discovered throughout as you wrote the book and did the research and all this? Were there funny stories that you discovered and you thought, wow, this is even funnier than I thought or anything that has humor that you can share with us? Oh, definitely. In fact, I'll read just a little excerpt from the book, but there are a lot of funny stories. This is a serious topic, and I, I really shouldn't make light because I respect people who've been in my situation. It's not something we wanted to happen. It's something that we may have contributed to. So I'm very, very mindful of that. But on the other end, I'm a serious person. I have a very serious side. People who know me in business and Christian knows me, you know, I'm very, very serious and thoughtful. However, I have the British humor thing going. I, it traces way, way back. And uh, I am a fun person. I like to be funny. I don't like to insult people, but I don't mind insulting myself. And so what I have done is I've taken the subject and I've lightened it up so people will be open and free and want to talk about it because it is a taboo subject. Uh, I haven't found a lot of research, Linda and I. Uh, I don't see a lot of books out there on it. I know that there are multiple marriers who are uh, perhaps suffering. And, and if you know that there is a person like me, an ordinary next door neighbor type person who's gone through this, uh, and if I can make it a little fun and entertaining along the way, uh, I mean, because some of the things I've done, I, I mean, what was I thinking? Really, what was I thinking? I always tell people in relationships, pay attention to the red flags. They are a big deal. They are a big deal. If you're in a relationship and someone says, I love to go gambling in Reno every single weekend. Well, if it's twice a year, maybe that's fun. If it's every single weekend, that may be an addiction that you might have to deal with in the relationship. Pay attention to it. Pay attention to uh, future in-laws who are sort of taking your personal power away and are making all of the decisions for you in a couple situation. Pay attention to someone who's punching you a little bit, shaking you, punching you in the stomach once in a while. It's not acceptable. It's not okay. It's not going to get better. It's not going to get better with time and with you keeping your head down. And there were many, many red flags in relationships leading to marriage that I thought, no big deal. No big deal. But this is a funny one. If I find my reading glass, I won't read long. I know reading to people can get a little bit boring. Um, but this is good. Before we get off the subject of no big deal, there were a couple of totally unrelated things I'll never forget about my second wedding day. My mother-in-law's wedding attire and bat do. I can still picture it all very clearly some 34 years later in a serene, bucolic setting set a quaint little white chapel nestled against a small duck pond with green rolling hills at the backdrop of the landscape. The scene would have made for a fine, impressionist-style work of art, except for the human interest element. Voila! My brand new mother-in-law to be squarely stood in the center of the chapel door, awaiting her escort down the aisle. There she was, all dressed in white, lace hanky in hand, I mean head to toe, everything, including her corsage, her pearls, and yes, that matching bouffant hairdo that looked like cotton candy without the pink tinge, if you know what I mean. After all, it was her big day. Mrs. Bigsby was releasing her overindulged brat of a son to me, little old secondhand Rose. She deserved to be queen for a day, not me. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry at her monochromatic ex appearance and at her lack of sensitivity for wearing white, which is usually reserved for the brides. She probably thought, well, that girl's been married before, so I can wear what I want, no big deal. Even my husband, even my husband, later admitted that when he saw his father bringing his mother down the aisle dressed like that, he thought, oh my God, it looks like I'm marrying my mother. <laughs> well, readers, all I can say is that marriage was doomed from day one, and it didn't help that my father-in-law had cautioned me about marrying his son minutes before the wedding, actually as I was tiptoeing up the path to the chapel. He whispered in my ear, are you sure you know what you're doing? 
This is my father-in-law, not my father, father-in-law. My son can be very difficult. He's very spoiled, you know. At that point, what is a girl to do? I simply brushed off his question, but isn't it odd that I remember it well to this day? And speaking of brushing things off, the chapel was filled with bats that came out every night. That's why we couldn't have a candlelight service, and why the cleaning crew was doing one last sweep of the bat poop one hour before we said our dues. No one has ever been able to tell me if bat shit is a good or bad omen. In my case, I guess it was bad. One other thing I forgot was to clearly state on the wedding invitation, be aware of bats, wear rain gear for ultimate protection, umbrellas will be provided in the vestibule, and without a doubt, catching a glimpse of a bat hovering overhead in the twilight still brings back memories, not of scary Frank Langella movies, but of the big fat mistake I made that second go round. So it is a big Thank deal. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the book, something else you mentioned in the book is the Enneagram. Oh yeah, yeah. are you all familiar with the Enneagram? Yeah. yeah, the Enneagram really goes back to the Middle East, but it was revived in Russia in the 1920s and came to the States in the 1960s. And I just learned about it recently. The Enneagram tells you a lot. It's really a human char characteristics model. It's a nine-sided star that really will tell you a lot about yourself. Uh, you'll sort of be labeled as an observer, a romantic, a helper, an achiever. I keep going. What do you think I was? The helper. Okay. The number two. I was going to say romantic. Yeah, I think I, I touched that other. Yeah. <laughs> I touched that other wing there, the you tip have two of the wings, star. Everything, yeah. I mean, you can have characteristics of some of the other things. Yeah, maybe a little bit of that. I'm clear helper. Now, at their best, helpers are Mother Teresa types. They're caring and giving and nurturing and loving and overly generous and easily man manipulated and all of that. And when you go into a marriage like that and you play second fiddle, you're not going to have equality and you're not going to have balance. So it really, being a helper worked as a disservice to me. On the, uh, also, on the negative side of helpers, they can be very possessive and very jealous and very insecure. And I was at least two of those. Do you, you could call me a poodle on a pant leg. Look at me, look, I want you, you can't go anywhere, you need to be with me. You know, and so I kind of smothered the husband I was with and they're like, I remember my lovely partner again in the back of the room. Uh, a few years into our relationship, we're sitting at the breakfast table at his house, and he said, I just want to tell you something. Now, don't, don't take this the wrong way. I love you very much. I'm not going anyplace. And again, that's, he didn't know about all the marriages. Uh, I'm not going anyplace. Uh, but he said, you have to get a, your own life. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, you've got to quit living vicariously through me. So I have a full plate. I'm raising my sons. I'm in a startup. I'm doing the best I can. You're putting 110% of your energy into this relationship, and I can't put that much into it. And you need to give yourself some space, maybe give me a little bit of space, quit canceling uh, uh, engagements with girlfriends, go out, do some volunteer work, find some interest, find a passion in life. I was hurt, I was crying. But I did listen to what he said with both ears and I stepped back and I went out and I got a life coach. Uh, didn't know about you, Carol, uh, you would have been the one. Went out and got a life coach and I uh, found out I needed to do some volunteer work. I took up karaoke. Uh, I started building and I quit canceling those uh, dinners with girlfriends on Saturday night when all of a sudden he was free. And I quit being that poodle on a pant leg, poodle on a pant leg. Look at me, I need you, I need you. You know, the insecure thing. So that, that was something yeah. that I learned. Yeah. 